The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 17th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, but you've got a question, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a slightly mixed bag. The slightly mix is coming from the New York Stock Exchange and the Dow, both those trading to the upside slightly. 18, 19 points for the Dow. That's flat. 44 points for the New York Stock Exchange. That's up a quarter point. New York Stock Exchange is working off its oversold condition. Spot Volatilix is still well above its 50-day exponents moving average, trading out at 17.09. That is not good for the equity markets out there. You've got gold off $3, silver is up 23 cents. That's a 1% move there. Likes we crude up 1 and 7 tenths percent or 30, a buck 39, trade out at 80.41, trying to take on resistance, the bottom of its profile. Natural gas is up four pennies, trade out at 277. A 30 year treasury is back 18 ticks. She's printed out at 118.25. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside. You've got Moderna up about six bucks, six percent. Thermo Fisher, six bucks, one percent. BlackRock, six bucks, less than one percent. Lamb Research, five bucks, about eight tenths of a percent. Chesapeake Energy, five bucks. 6%. To the downside, it's Mercado Libre off $26, a 2% move. Knights Limited, ADR down 20 bucks, a 10% move. Cigna is down 6.5%, 19 bucks, 19 bucks for Madison Square Garden. That's a 9% move. Inspire Medical Systems off 6%, 14 points to the downside. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. Let's begin with, um, let's begin with, you know, let's begin with. I don't know, Stevie, what do you want to begin with? Well, first, let's take a look at, I mentioned New York Stock Exchange, it's oversold condition. I, I mentioned oversold. I, I should have said extreme oversold. Yesterday, this advanced decline oscillator got down to the minus 250 level, got down just below that. So you're looking at panel number three, whether it's three up from the bottom or three down from the uh, top out there. So really, we call it the center panel out there. It says advanced decline oscillator over on the left-hand side. You'll see other instances where this oscillator gets down to that minus 250 level, for example, July 19, 2021. What did that lead to? That led to a big, nice rally out there. In fact, we got above the uh, prior highs. The next time we got down towards that minus 250 level, that was back on uh, August the um, 19th out there. Same kind of outcome. Uh, when we were back below the minus 250 area, this is back on uh, December 1st of 2021. Same kind of immediately jolt to the upside. Then we have these other patterns that can form out here. And the other patterns that I'm referring to are when we get a, um, a lower lower price inside of, so let's take an example of the bottoms made back here in, in the uh, September 2022 timeframe. We had price get down below the minus 250 level and we had lower lows, but what we had also is we had a rising price oscillator. So that's a divergence. So there's two different ways that this uh, advanced client oscillator will generate this uh, oversold, uh, work off this oversold 
um, uh, territory and two different types of patterns that could could form out here. Right now, the one that we've got is one that goes back into the 2021 time frame, but the, the, it's still very early in the day out there. The important thing to note here is that we, uh, and we'll take a look at New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client so you can look at how the markets have responded when price got down to those levels. And that says we're going to see a counter trend rally. It does mean we're going to see it today. It does mean, though, we are going to see as this oversold condition gets worked up. I don't know which of the two scenarios it plays out. We'll certainly know that. We'll take a look at this together. But uh, absolutely, we are in extreme oversold conditions. Now, when we match that up, are we all, we're also in a, a little bit of a precarious position here because we're but we potentially could be getting a change in trend. Now, that change of trend, we let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart. What do you mean, Stevo? And what I mean, Stevo, is we're going to go ahead and open up just the NQ charts. Now, what I'm using out here is I'm using my synthetic symbol. You'll see it's got a little squiggly on an NQ, a one, and a question mark or a high uh, exclamation point out there. This just provides me better tools and a continuous contract and I can provide you now with uh, uh, support resistance levels as opposed to just looking at the September contract where all this data has been stitched together. Now we might actually have the same thing if I take a look at the same point let me just see if we do on the weekly chart yeah on the October contract it's 14865 on Stevie's synthetic contract it is at 14865 okay so that's a beautiful thing. What I'm referring to is if you take a look at this weekly chart here you will typically, well, if we take a look at coming off the most recent uh, bottom out here, that most recent bottom from October of 2022, we haven't seen any closes below the bottom of a weekly profile. So should we get this tomorrow? Not necessarily today. Again, that number is 14,865. That would be signaling to you and I a change in trend. And what is uh, typically an unfavorable seasonal time period that should take us lower, should take us lower into the October uh, time frame. At least October could be into the early, late January time frame as well. But those would be the two different price target areas. So this is really key about trying to understand, are we at a change of trend or are we at a place where the uh, buy the dipsters will roll in here? What I don't want you to get too caught up into is if, if we should expect some buying as it works off that oversold condition inside the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, if we take a look at the other three equity future contracts for their daily time frame, and you can see I've got trend lines out here. So this little rising trend line, you know, that's been broken on the uh, NQ I'm still looking at. In the case of the ES Mini, it did complete a weekly sell, the D-point pattern. Its key level of support is 43.77. Uh, in the case of the Dow, the interesting thing here is it just ran into trend line resistance, weekly trend line resistance, as we can see. Uh, but price is still holding strong. It is trading above the top of its weekly profile. The real key level on a counter trend move, meaning that the Dow would want to trade higher, where it would find support is between 34,619 and 34,823. We're at 34,849 as we speak right now. The key level for the uh, Russell 2000, you would say, would be the bottom of its weekly profile, and that's at the 1844 level out there. So. It's all about the NQ. And if I just real quickly, while we've got a few seconds before we go to the hard breakout here, I'll just put up the intraday charts for the NQ. And then we're going to go take a look at the request, some of the requests that have come in. But here are those intraday charts. The 10-minute uh, chart of all time frames that is really providing wonderful signals here for the NQ. And this is what I've been paying attention to, folks. The 10-minute chart. You got a nice TD9 count top led to a TD9 count bottom price running right into resistance at red oscillator and change line. Not until price gets above that, could any kind of rally have any kind Kind of legs to it. That number to be watching is about 14908. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors C -c -c call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Let's get to our first question. First question coming in this morning from Tom G. He wants to take a look at a potential long position in UCO. UCO is the uh, Bloomberg 2X. I believe it's a two-time um, pro share for uh, being long, uh, light, sweet, crude. So I've got the UCO charts up on my screen, but each of you know the uh, what's going to come out of my mouth next, or sort of what's going to come out of my mouth next, which is for us to take a look at this chart is somewhat futile because we really need to look at the underlying instrument, and that is going to be light, sweet, crude. But with regard to what's UCO doing, it formed a nice Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Yesterday, price got back inside its profile. Today, it's rejected that profile. It's back above it. Yeah, that's perfect there, Jimmy D. That's a perfect screenshot of that. And uh, price is now trading above the top of its profile. And so the UCO chart would be communicating to you and I that as long as price remains above 2985, it could be setting up a move up to 3129. But now let's go actually take a look at the underlying instrument and see what the heck that is communicating to us. And that means we're going to go take a look at light sweet crude. So we'll switch over to those charts here momentarily. We'll have a multi set of panels. So we've got all different types of time frames to look at it. In the case of it, again, we've rolled over into the October contract. You might want to go take a look and see what's inside UCO, but I, it should be October contract or it should be by the end of the day. Here we can see that the October contract for lights recruit price is trading above that green oscillator and change line, but it's got resistance in the 8477-8831 level. Lights recruit would not go ahead and break out until we get a close above 8831. The weekly time frame chart shows what? Well, it shows uh, no topping pattern. Um, is I can't really draw an A to B equals C D out here. What it really shows, if I just simply go ahead and expand this out, maybe uh, expand out the chart as well this way, what we can see out here is we can see that price is basically, uh, I could do this this way, it's basically gotten up to this prior set of uh, swing points out here and sort of I can't. There, there's kind of a straight line. So it's really right back up to another area of resistance. Didn't hit it exactly. That's okay. So price is running in that resistance area, Tom. So I want you to pay attention. That's on the weekly chart. On the daily time frame chart, what we have out here is we have a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That was confirmed with this bear sash candle. Yesterday was a close, was the second close below the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of that daily profile is priced at uh, 80.66. 
So we're below that, and price is still, the, we've just had a counter trend move up to that level. If price were to get inside that profile, then I could see potentially, or I could say, okay, you want to take a long trade in there, and then at least this is making sense for that. Instead, what we have right now at 11.21 is that uh, just a little bit of a counter trend move. Now, I don't have an A to B equal CD to the downside or anything like that to draw in here. What I do have is prices below profile support. As long as that remains out there, Tom, price could be targeting 74.38. It's TD9 count breakout area. I'd watch the 30 minute chart. The 30 minute and the 60 minute chart, I'd watch them for clues. Now the 30 minute chart is already completed its TD9 count top. That suggests that price should at least pull back to its oscillator and change line, which is at about 79.93. Now 79.88 is the top of the profile. That's your range for support. On a pullback, on a retracement, you'd like to see price hold that level. If it does, does that mean it's bullish? At least intraday it would be bullish. On the daily time frame, the larger time frame right now, eh, not so sure about that. The 60-minute the time frame chart is going to complete its TD9 count top at 12 noon. That, too, suggests a pullback to support. Now, if the move lower on an intraday basis, Tom, is only a counter trend move, and actually I'm speaking with uh, Hector as well because he's interested, in, as Tom is, in the XLE. And we're going to go take a look at how, co how correlated those two instruments are. So we'd really need to, in order to trade the XLE, you want to know what's going on in Lightsweet Crude because it has an impact, or you'll see that it has an impact. So here, what we'd be looking for is on a pullback in lights we crude on a 60-minute time frame, if it's only a counter trend move to the downside and it's getting ready to somehow try to reestablish its bullish ways, price will find support between 79.50 and 79.71. And I'm referring to the body of the candle, not the uh, intraday signal during that hourly time period out there. So we've got two TD9 count tops, one that's already completed, one that's going to complete. You should be expecting to anticipate that light speed crude will pull back out there. But is it a long? I think at this stage here, it needs to prove itself to us. And that first proof is going to have to come from getting back inside its daily profile. And you've got the number there. So I would stay away from UCO at this stage of the game. Now, if I take a look at, oh, that was a September. Let me change this here. 23. Um, if I take a look at days, consecutive days, lower consecutive days, higher, you know, it's a great tool out here. What we just saw was three consecutive moves lower in light sweet crude. Now, coming off of the uh, low out here for light sweet crude, the low I'm referring to is one from May of 2023. Uh, we've seen one. Yeah, we've seen only one three-day move lower. The rest have been two-day moves lower out here. So it is not unusual to see at least this counter trend move. Could it be a bottom? It could out there. But if it is going to be a bottom, it's going to need to at least get back inside that profile. But I don't want to beat that dead horse out there. I think I've beat it enough. But I think you kind of have the feel with regard to UCO. But more importantly, what is Lightspeed Crude communicating to us? So now let's go take a look at those XLE charts. Well, actually, before we do this, I'm going to close this out close this out. I'm going to change screens. I say I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. And then we're going to go look at the correlation before we go take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. So here we get back to the black background screens. I'll get back to my correlation set of charts out here. And here we take a look at the uh, uh, the October contract for lights we crude. Again, you can see that bottom of that profile out there. That's at the 8066 level. And below it is the energy sector, the XLE. And below that, now I've got this set to a three day setting. So this is as strict as I can get it to. When bars are above zero, it tells us about a directional correlation. When bars are below zero, it tells us about an inverse relationship. I think we could say that there's about a 98% directional correlation between the way that uh, XLE is going to trade and light speed crude out here. Now, in the XLE, what we can see is prices trading into its bearish structure daily profile out here. So I would never suggest that you take a long position in the XLE with price running into where the sellers are located. And the sellers in the XLE are located in between 88 99 and 90 bucks even steven it still could be a bottom but it'd be very difficult for me to tell you that now is the time to sell into it knowing that lights we crude can't handle resistance and that the xle is trading right into resistance so that's what the black background chart is telling us that's what the correlation is that's out there now let's go change over to the white background charts let's do this once again and so far so good today 
Um, no demerits yet for Stevie. I'm sure that I will get one. But now let's take a look at the energy sector. And we take a look at the energy sector out here. We can see, again, the same thing that we were looking at. Uh, it's a positive, or the slight positive is right now priced above that green oscillator and change line, but still trading into resistance. On a weekly basis, we can see the weekly top of its profile. That so far is acting as resistance. The uh, monthly chart's got a TD9 count top, but just a consolidation with inside the profile there. So, um, Let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart. Let's see what the, oh, let's go. The same thing that we took a look at on Lightspeed Crew, where we took a look at correlations out there. You had three days, moved to the downside in Lightspeed Crew. Well, guess what? The energy sector, the same thing. And like Lightspeed Crew, since the low that formed out here back into June of 2023, uh, what we've only seen out here is we've seen one, two, three, three bar moves to the downside, and then we've seen rallies. So what we could be seeing here in the energy sector, well, at least a one-day rally, but more likely a two-day rally out there. Just know that this thing is trading into resistance out there. So I think we have covered that. Um, on a 30-minute basis, real quickly, before we go to this hard breakout here, it did form a nice TD9 count bottom. Roach meant to indicator bottom too, with price struggling at its second TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 89 buckaroonies. So Tom and Hector, I hope that that helps you out. Although Hector, I believe you had a question about that bullish morning star. We'll be right back and I'll answer that. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. So Hector's question is, uh, hey, we've got a bullish reversal candle today. And Hector, the body of yesterday's candle was just too large and closed too far below uh, the prior bar, the uh, prior body of the of the prior candle out there. And that was too much. So it's not a, a Three River Morning Star. You know, that's going to look more like something. If you look on the bottom right here on this uh, monthly chart, you'll see how you've got a very small bodied candle. And then uh, so that's more of your Three River, Four River, Five River, depending on how many small bodied candles that you would have there uh, so but you do have a bull separating line so you still you do have the bullish reversal signal but is that enough to suggest that this is going to take off to the moon first you're dealing with resistance on the weekly and the daily um, no top but you're trading into that resistance zone so I don't know how to answer that question because I don't know could it be it, it most certainly could but um, and I know you're also, I think you're already long, so I wouldn't exit my position because we don't really have a top out here. We've just got consolidations going on inside of profile levels. But uh, is that enough of a signal to say we're headed to the moon? No, it just says it's enough of a signal to take on the resistance zone. So I hope that that helped you out with regard to the XLE. That was for uh, Tom G and for Hector. Uh, Sat P inside the Tiger's Den, he wants to take a look at Saba. Cassava Science is out here and is looking for a bottom. And uh, the bottom might be right here right now today. So this is an easy trade for you if you want to take it. Why? Because yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count bottom. So it's trading at 1715. If this closes below 1709, you know to exit the position. Doesn't trade below it, closes below it. So your reward risk doesn't get much better than this. We are also in wave number seven, that's letter G. That pattern cannot be confirmed until we have a higher low, that would be tomorrow. So if you're looking for patterns that could get you into Saba, well, this is it. And if you're looking for patterns to get you out of Saba, this is it. Because you get a close below the bottom of, uh, of yesterday, or the close below yesterday's low, you would jettison that position. So it's a pretty small risk out there. Now, what price should do is it should bounce up towards its oscillator and change line. It's a test resistance. That's currently 1786. On a rally, that will move higher. And the bottom of the profile is 1802. So I'd say that the 1802 level is your first target. Now, when we look at a weekly time frame chart here for Cassava, nothing looks good. We're trading back into uh, it's Three River Morning Star pattern, uh, just uh, just uh, uh, coincidentally out there. It's trading into a swing point that takes you all the way down to the 16, uh, 1384 level. On a monthly basis, it's not looking good, but you're trading into a TD9 count bottom from back in July of 2022 out there. So it doesn't mean that this pattern won't work or you won't get some type of move or a counter trend move out there, but those are the parameters you were looking now. We can go look at an, an, a short term, a 30 minute chart, it's the only one that I've got present. If we're looking for confirmed signals here on the 30 minute, open this up here you actually have it you've got a bullish engulfing candle that confirmed a rose momentum indicator bottom pattern and now you're trading with inside a profile level so support is down at the uh, level on a 30 minute base at 1706 resistance 1732 out there and if you can clear 1732 1823 would become its 30 minute price target but we know at 1802 1786 we've got daily uh, resistance areas. So that's on Cassava Sciences. Sat P, I hope that helps you out. I know you wanted a twofer, and that twofer was LIT. So let's pull LIT up on our screens out here, and LIT is, I don't know what it is, it is the Global X Lithium and Battery Technology ETF out here. And here you're also looking for a bottom. Now here's bad news, and the bad news is that this negated a TD9 count bottom pattern two days ago. And so we don't have a bottom. You're trading below. I've got a nice weekly TD9 count top. And now price is below its breakout level of support. And it's below the bottom of its profile. It's trading below a hammer candle from back in April. Uh, so you've got some different support levels. You're trading into, on a weekly basis, the swing point from January 6th. Uh, that is uh, 2.7 million shares. So far for the week, you have done, or this has done 2.2 million shares. So this is pulling back in that swing point. It looks like perhaps with some volume on a daily basis, what does this do? Yesterday we did seven. Yeah, it's pulling back with volume. So it's likely going to go tag that low. Don't know if it'll hold that low, but that could be if a test and rejects, I would say 57, 56 on lighter volume. That could be an entry into it. The monthly chart is saying it wants to go tag the 54.88 level. The point is, or the point that I want to make here, is I don't have any kind of signals inside of LIT that suggests that you take a long position inside this lithium battery ETF. Now, 
on a intraday time period, you know, even the bounces have run into resistance. That's been at the top of the profile levels for the most part. 58.24 is the current profile level inside of LIT for its 30-minute uh, time frame. So I'd stay away from this one, at least at this stage of the game. Let it test that uh, weekly swing low out there, and then let's take another look at it. So I hope that helps you out, Sat P. Nicholas wrote in, and Nicholas wants to take a look at the seasonal chart for Goldilocks. So I'm going to change screens here to do that, just so I don't, uh, for whatever reason, when I put that up on my other screen here, it shuts it down. That's a weird thing, isn't it? But it is what it is, and I know about it, so I'll plan for it. So now we're going to take a look at it. He just simply wanted to take a look at the seasonal cycle. And what Nicholas Wood had picked up before the last time, he thought that August and September were bullish months, so that price could uh, top out in uh, th those time periods. So this is a 55-year seasonal pattern for a Goldilocks. The red vertical line tells us where we're at right now. I've detrended this, so it just helps us clearly see where the bottoms form, where the tops forms out here. We are in the favorable seasonal cycle. That began really all the way back here in the uh, July timeframe. But uh, Goldilocks formed those uh, TD9 count bottoms and it negated it. And so we're in the favorable seasonal cycle, but it's not really participating. But to answer your question specifically, July, August, and September over a 55-year period on average have been a positive or a bullish month. And yes, typically then uh, we get that uh, sell-off from September into October, and then we resume higher when it comes to Goldilocks. So uh, uh, good, uh, good memory on your part, Nicholas. Here's that chart again. Now, that's a 55-year period of time. Somebody might be saying, I heard a ping in my ear. Uh, I didn't really hear one, but I'm thinking there was one. Somebody said, hey, Steve, 55 years? Can you give me something shorter? We can give you anything you want. Well, we can't. Well, we, we, we sort of could. I don't have the time to. But here's the 10 year cycle. The 10 year cycle says that gold doesn't really top out till August 28th. Well, we aren't moving higher into that. So I'd say that's not really the uh, pattern that's in play out here. A 15 year time period says that we move higher into September 4th. That doesn't seem to be working out right here. So, anyways, those are the seasonal cycles for Goldilocks for the 10, 15, and the 55-year time frame out there. So I hope that, that helps you out, uh, Nicholas. The next request coming in from John C. inside the Tiger's Den. And John is short Apple, and he's looking for levels out here. So now let's remember to go back to the white background charts. So let's pull up the Apple charts. And right, let's change the screens. Hey, voila, smooth as can be. Now we take a look at the Apple charts out here. Apple, let me just uh, open up this daily chart. Let me hit one more button here. So Apple, here we go, Apple negated its TD9 count bottom pattern, or it's negating it right now today. So the low for it, that pattern, 176.55, yesterday's close, 176.57. Well, today it's negating that signal out there. So where's price headed to? We can see that Apple is right now trading below its weekly support level. So that's the first area for you to pay attention to. That's at 175.31. John, see what I don't know, even though price is trading below it, will this hold by tomorrow? Don't know the answer to that. That's first level. The second level on a weekly basis is 170.42. There's no other level on the daily time frame just yet for us to take a look at. That next level is way down there, 137. So let's settle with the next levels are between 168.79, 170.42, and 175.31. Let me know if that gives you the information that you're looking for. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the stock charts here for Elevance uh, Healthcare. ELV is the uh, ticker symbol, and this is for David in Panama City. So his first question is, is September week. So to answer that question, I'm going to go back to those black background charts. We'll come back and take a look at these stock charts out here. But let me answer his question specifically right away. And we'll get back to our Seasonix uh, charts out here. Very cool tool. Uh, let's see how much data we have. We can go back 21 years. So here's the 21-year chart for Elevance. And the question is, is September week. Well, when we take a look at the seasonal pattern over this 21-year period of time, September and February are the two weakest months of the year or have been. Uh, for Elevance uh, Health. So the answer to that question is yes. If you look at the seasonal cycle out here, we can see that we are right at where price should start moving lower out there. Usually there's a pullback that lasts through about the um, end of August, and we see a little bit of a rally into mid-September and a move lower into the middle October time frame before it starts its rally for the remainder of the year. So to answer your question, is September a week month? Uh, we just saw that answer there, and that was easily identified. That's 21 years. Let's go to a 10-year period of time, and 10-year period of time is really showing us the same thing. In fact, over 10 years, September has been the weakest month overall. So you've got that piece of it pegged. Now, Will it actually do what you think it's going to do? Because the question is, will it actually fill these two gaps out here? So I'm going to stay on the black background charts right now. So the issue that you've got with regard to those, first we can see that support is sold. So the last gap was up with uh, 2.6 million shares. Now look, on an average day, this does about six, seven, eight hundred thousand shares. It doesn't do 2.6 million shares. The first sign of strength is right back here. Here's the second gap, or really it was the first gap that David's talking about. July 14, 2.5 million shares. Even on this pullback right here, 711,000 shares, this is on the trading session, testing that breakout level, testing the bottom of its uh, daily profile support at uh, 461.11, and it was pulling back on 938,000 shares. So right now, it's not giving you the volume metric that you'd like to see for it to pull back. Can it fill the gap? Sure, it can, but it hasn't. doesn't have the volume here. Right now, what you've got is a good old-fashioned consolidation, but you're headed to that seasonal cycle out there. 
And as long as price doesn't close about 480.95, which I know you would jettison your positions there um, if we were to get up to that level. But that's where price would have to get above, close above, in order to suggest that this is on its merry way. And in fact, that the C point of an A to B equals CD was the low so far from August the 8th out there. That's not the call that we're making, but that would be the call we'd make if price closed about 480.95. So will it fill those gaps? I don't know. On the weekly basis, you can see price is pulled back. There's no top out here, but price is pulled back. Let me see if there's a trend line. I mean, I could draw one in, but I just like to use my automated tool. Let me just turn that on, see what that picks up and detects. So you, you've run into trend line resistance out here, but that's it. But price is also up above the top of its weekly profile. So you've got bullish and kind of resistance, if you will, a message there. And you've got a good old fashioned consolidation uh, inside of the uh, monthly profile. So I know that I at least answered your question. Is September a week month? Traditionally, historically, it has been, whether it's over the last 10 years or the last 25 years out there, maybe it was 21 years. So, David, I hope that helps you out. That is the best that I can do. Um, let's go take our next request that came in here, and that is from ELO, and he wants to take a look at high-grade copper. So I'm going to get over to, we'll go take a look at the copper charts out here. Now in the copper, September is still, I believe September is the active contract, but it's rolling into December over the course of the next uh, uh, day or two out here. So I've still got the September contracts up on my screen. Uh, oh, well, they're not on my screen just yet, but they will be here momentarily. So now we've got the high-grade copper charts up here. And what do we have? So on a daily basis, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom that formed uh, two days ago. And so far, that level is held. Uh, price also this morning tested its TD9 count breakout level of 36.38. So I'd say as long as price remains above $3.63, 3638 $3.63. Price should go target that oscillator and change line. And that's up at the 375. Now it's red. If price tests and rejects the red oscillator and change line, that's a bear signal. It tells you for that time frame, the daily, that you would have a falling price oscillator below zero. So the daily is kind of, um, we'll call it neutral at the moment. The weekly is consolidating with inside its profile. So you've got to watch $3.62. A close below that would signal move back to 330. The uh, weekly monthly time frame chart shows that uh, price is back inside its profile. And if this area fails, 368, that could send us back to the 333 area out here. Intraday, what do we have set up? You're below profiles on the 30. You're trying to get back to test support after a TD9 count top on the 60. So I pay more attention to the 60. 3.680 is the first area of support. A close below that brings 3.67 into play. And below that, 3.6355. It's trying to form a bottom. That's what the two-hour, the four-hour, and the five-hour are communicating to us. And the daily, obviously, is telling us the same. So overall, watch the intraday charts for the pullback. You've got that TD9 count. I'd really be paying attention to the 60-minute time frame chart. At this stage here, the message is somewhat bullish, but it needs to really play out a little bit more uh, than it has uh, so far. Uh, so uh, you were looking using uh, your yellow using September... I think you just wanted the parameters. So I've provided you with the parameters, most certainly for uh, September. Let me just change uh, to December here for the daily time frame. Let me just see what pops up here, see if there's anything else that I can provide you with information on. And the answer is it's got a TD9 count bottom as well. It says that its price target is $3.78. So that was uh, high-grade copper. Uh, I'm just going to change this back to September for the time being. And that was both the September and the December contracts for its daily time frame. So ELO, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. If not, just let me know and we'll get you what it is that you are looking for. The next question coming in from David in Panama City. It was a twofer. David's got the puts on HubSpot. H-U-B-S is the ticker symbol. So let's get up and try to find those uh, charts. Where did Stevie put H-U-B-S? There we go. Well, that's not it. Let's try this. There we go. H-U-B-S. And the question is, oh, you wanted the Philly housing index. Uh, H-G, sorry. Uh, ELO wanted the housing. H-G, uh, ELO, what's the ETF uh, for uh for the housing uh, ETF. That's going to be easier for me to pull up. Put that in the public den, if you would. That would be easier for me to uh, grab from. So, uh, and I'll pull that symbol up. But let's take a look at HubSpot out here. David in Panama City has got the puts on that. And as long as price, uh, so first, was there any kind of a bottom out here? Any kind of bottom pattern? The only bottom pattern 
really that I have is it formed a Rhodes Mint Dominicator top. Price pulled back to its breakout level of support. Didn't get all the way down there, but it's held. That's at 473.44. The price right now is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Now, what it did do yesterday was a test of the top of the profile, which was also its red oscillator and change line. So conditions remain bearish to neutral. Bearish to neutral. Neutral because it's traded with inside, because it, it really has, in essence, tested that support level, and it's traded with inside this bullish structured profile. So you just have a good old-fashioned consolidation going on between 487.90 and 519.07. So the strong support level on a retracement here, David, is between 487.90 and 498.29. The weekly time frame has a nice Rhodesman indicator bottom with price consolidating with inside its bullish structured profile. If this were to close above on a weekly basis, 511.34, that tells us about a run to the 531 level, and you close above that green oscillator and change line, you're all the way back to 571.39. Bar 8 of a TD9 count is likely to confirm this week, but that's not a topping signal. Instead, we had price pull back and test support. David, that was at 478.97. Hmm. This is holding some support levels pretty well. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol TY. That's Tricontinentalist for Nicholas. And uh, Nicholas, price is trading below the bottom of its uh, daily profile. Looks to me like it wants to go target 27.12. 27.12 is the um, it's TD9 count breakout level. Uh, it did close below a swing point. Let's see if it was with volume. That's from the trading day of August 7th. That had volume of uh, 26,000 shares. Wow, this is thinly traded. 
And that was close with 41. So there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. You've got a confirmed A to B equals CD. That pattern is going to look like this. I'm just going to move this uh, line over to the C point. This is the approximate A to B equals CD. I'm not being accurate here. And that just uh, confirms what I said earlier, that price is likely targeting 27.12. It's TD knockout breakout level. Now, price is sitting at a level of support right now. And that's the top of its weekly profile. And that's up at 27.49. So, you start moving below that, that suggests a pullback to 27.31. That is basically around where the A to B equals CD to the downside pattern is. So that's what it looks like for ticker symbol TY. Let's go take a look at your second request. That was for Microsoft. We take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft does not have a bottoming pattern here per se. So where is it headed to? Well, on a weekly basis, it suggests to move back to 307.59. That is the TD9 count break out uh, level. Now, the other area of support out here for Microsoft is going to be its weekly oscillator and change line. That's at 317.08. So you want to watch. It's possible that it could find support. But if it gets below that level, closes below that level, moves below that level, then 307.59 is the likely price target. Uh, lastly, we'll just, uh, or maybe not lastly, let's go take a quick peek here. Here's the NQ charts. We were looking at these earlier. I mentioned the uh, TD9, the 10-minute chart is really still providing the best signals. It still has an active TD9 count with price now trying to get above that oscillator and change line. So watch this area. We haven't seen on a 10-minute basis price above that since this morning's TD9 count top. And a close above on a 10-minute basis, that means four minutes from now, above 14.885 is going to suggest to move all the way up to the 14.947. 14.962 level. Again, that's just focused completely on the 10 minute time frame chart. Folks, have a uh, terrific Thursday. Be safe out there. And please join me on Fantastic Friday. Thanks again for joining me today. We'll see you tomorrow.